Ever wondered how the various logical circuits work and are used in LT Spice? No? Well, that means you're probably not watching the right channel. But if you're curious, then keep watching. So first things first, where do we get our logical circuitry from? Well, basically you need to go into your component selector and go to digital. And here we have our various digital circuits that we have available in LT Spice. So we got everything from buffers to logical gates and some flip flops. And what I want to do today is go over some of these and see how they work. So first things first, we got our basic buffers. Now, as you can see, I have already written out some parameters to these. And if you want to know more about these parameters, you can simply look up special functions in the help file. And here you can see the various parameters that can be used for this type of circuits. So let's see how this thing actually works. So what I've done here is I've gotten an input signal that goes from zero to two volts. And then I've got my basic inverting buffer, non-inverting buffer, and the buffer that has both an inverting and non-inverting input at the same time. And now normally your output will be a logical one at one volt by default, and the transition will happen at 0.5 volts. And this is basically what I've messed with here. So for my first inverting output, I took my high voltage output from one volt, the default to two volts, and I've kept my reference voltage, so the transition voltage at 0.5. By default, LT Spice will make an average between the high and low voltage. And for the second buffer, I put my low voltage at minus one. So from here, you can see the first application that you might use such buffers for, and that is level shifting. So in certain circuits, maybe you're trying to communicate from your microcontroller to a flash memory or something like that, the two circuits might end up running at different supply voltages, one at 3.3, one at five volts. And basically this is what you can use this sort of buffers from. You can take 3.3 volt logic and turn it into five volt logic or the other way around. So you can go between various supply voltages. Now LT Spice has another form of buffers you can play with. And these are trigger Schmidt buffers, meaning that the transition from low to high is not set in a single point, but rather in two points. So you have a different voltage at which the output turns high and a different voltage at which it turns low. So for these devices, our trigger point is set with these two parameters, our threshold voltage and our hysteresis voltage. So our low point is set by the difference between these two and the high point by the sum of these two. So in this case, I've put a threshold voltage of 0.5 volts and a hysteresis of 0.3. That means that if I take a signal going from zero to one volt, where do we expect our transition points to be? Well, we can quickly look at the output and see that the output turns high at our threshold voltage plus our hysteresis, so at 0.8 volts, and our output turns low at our threshold minus our hysteresis, so at 0.2 volts. So why would we need this for? Well, actually this is a way of correctly modeling various circuitry. For example, in this case, I've got here the datasheet for a generic buffer type of circuit, a TTL, and we can see in its parameters that it has a certain voltage at which the voltage at which the input is a high level and at which the input is a low level. So if we supply this circuit with 4.5 volts, anything below 1.35 is definitely a low input signal. Everything above 3.15 is definitely a high signal. And the voltage in between is a so-called non-decision area. And basically this is what you can implement with this trigger Schmidt type of buffer. Now, of course, there are dedicated trigger Schmidt ICs out there. And depending on what you want to model, you can use either these or the standard buffers. So let's move on. We have one more type of buffer in LT Spice, namely the differential input buffer, for which you can also see it has this trigger Schmidt symbol on it, so we again have this threshold and hysteresis parameters present. So what does this do? Well, basically, you can see that it has a plus and a minus input. So what this will do, it will take the voltage on its plus input, subtract the voltage on its minus input, and then compare it to these thresholds. So what I got here is the an input positive signal that goes from 0 to 2 volts, an input negative signal that goes also from 0 to 2 volts, and the period is a bit different between the two. Now if we look at the output, we can see that the output turns high only in certain specific areas. So if we do the math to see what happens if we subtract the negative from the positive, we can see that in this first period, 
the difference is zero, so they're both equal, and when our output is high, we can see that the positive is higher than our negative, and the difference needs to be higher than 0.8 to switch our output on, and then it needs to be lower than 0.2 to switch our output low. So what kind of applications does this thing have? I mean, where would you use something like this? Well, turns out this actually has quite important practical uses in differential communication. What I got here is the most simplified and most basic type of differential communication line. I've got some input signals, so some pulses, which go through a buffer that has a, both an inverting and a non-inverting output. So you can see we have our non-inverted and our inverted output. So you can see that one is on when the other is off. And then these two go into this differential input buffer. And at the end, we get a signal that is the same as our input. Now the slope is different, but the timings are roughly the same. And of course, this can be corrected from various other parameters. So what on earth is this thing good for? I mean, why would you bother complicating yourself with so many signals? Well, an easy way of showing how this works is by adding some perturbation to these lines. So I, what I created here is a transformer in which two of the windings are the actual communication lines and then the third winding is an injection winding. So I can inject an AC signal into my communication lines. So let's just see what happens here. So we can see that our two inputs have a certain perturbation on them. So this sine wave is being injected, but our output is completely untouched. We can make this even worse if we play around with the parameters. So we can see that our inverted and non-inverted signals are starting to look quite horrible at this moment, but still the output is completely unaffected. And that's because the difference between the inverted and non-inverted signals is always the same, even if each of them by themselves have quite a large amount of perturbation. Now this sort of communication is used for various practical applications. For example, your USB cable, which uses this sort of differential transmission. Okay, so one more thing about buffers to mention, well, this is actually valid for all this sort of logic circuitry in LDSpice, is where the current comes from. Well, you may have noticed that these gates have two inputs. You've got your input in the middle, and then you got your second input somewhere on the bottom of the symbol. Basically, this is the ground return path for any sort of currents going through the output. And this can clearly be seen in more detail using this circuit I got right here. So I take this input signal, I can see that there's absolutely no current going into my logical gate, but then if I put a certain load to the output, I get my signal inverted, so as the gate is supposed to work, but I also get certain current going through the output. So I get either 2 milliamps going through the upper resistor or 2 milliamps going through the lower resistor. Now part of this current comes from my supply. So through the upper resistor I've got current coming from the supply, going through the resistor and then closing through my logical circuit. And then when the output is at a high voltage, then my current comes from my logical circuit and goes through my lower resistor. And this current actually closes through this ground pin. And we can see that if we probe it, we can see a current going through it which is either a positive 2 milliamps or a negative 2 milliamps, depending on the direction of the current. So by default, this pin will be connected to the ground by LT spice, but if you want to analyze it or use it for whatever purpose, then you can use your own connections to it. Okay, so enough about buffers. What else? Well, of course, we got our logical gates. So the basic OR, AND, and XOR gates with a non-inverted and inverted output. So you got your both your OR and your negated OR at the same time. And let's just see how they work. So we got our two input signals. I gave them different voltages to make them more clearly visible. And of course the AND gives us a positive output only when both our input signals are high. Our OR gives us a positive output when either one of the signals is high. And our XOR gives us a positive output only when a single input is high. Now you may notice that there's quite a lot of inputs on these gates. So right here you can see five inputs and then this ground pin. So what happens with the other ones? What are those good for? Well, basically these simulate multiple input logical gates. So if you want to have an AND gate with more than two inputs, you don't need to actually use more than two AND gates to form a more complicated AND gate. You can use single gates and use more of their inputs. Now by default, if you do not use these inputs, you can leave them floating and LT Spice will just ignore them when it does a simulation. So let's see how these multiple input gates work. Again, we have our three input signals 
and our AND will give a positive output only when all of them are high, our OR will give a positive output when either of the inputs are high, and our XOR will give a positive output only when a single input is high. So if two inputs out of three are high, it will not give you a positive output. So there's one more thing to talk about regarding digital circuits in LTSPICE, and that is flip-flops. And the first most basic flip-flop that you can get is your set-reset flip-flop. Now of course you can build this out of logical gates, but you can also use your dedicated circuit to make life easier. So you may know that this uses two inputs, a set and a reset, and then you got your output and your inverted output. So when you get a set pulse, your output will turn high, and it will stay high until you get a reset pulse. And then it will stay low until you get your next set pulse. So quite a basic type of flip-flop, can be used for memory applications or any sort of other circuitry, it's actually at the heart of the classical 555 IC and many other circuits. Now you have one more type of flip-flop in LTSPICE and that is the D type of flip-flop. Now its most common application involves shifting data. So you got your data input and a clock input. And then you have a clear and preset input and basically with your clear you can delete any sort of information that is inside and with your preset you can set the initial value that is stored inside it. Basically what this type of circuit does is take your digital value from the input, read it on your rising clock edge and then output it afterwards. And to make this sort of daisy chain work, so what I got here is three D type circuits, you also need to use this delay time parameter, which is set to zero, unfortunately, by default. So to add all these parameters, you simply right click on any of your circuits and you start adding parameters in the value column. So simply edit and write whatever you need to write in here. So let's see how this thing works. Basically, we got our data pulse and many, many, many clock pulses. Now, if you look at the output, we can see that after the rising edge of our clock pulse, the D flip flop took the information on the input, which was a logical high, and then shifted it to the output. Now our second D flip-flop did not have anything on the input right when the clock edge happened, so its output stayed low, and it did that until the next clock pulse. So during the second clock pulse, so the second green pulse here, the second D flip-flop read the high data from the input and shifted it to the output. At the same time our first D flip-flop read nothing on the input and then stored it at the output. So you can see that our input data, so this red one, before our first clock pulse was in the input, then it disappeared, then it moved in between the two D flip-flops and after another clock pulse moved one more circuit to the right. And of course with another clock pulse it will move also to the output of our first register. So this sort of circuits are commonly used in multiple type of circuitry including serial to parallel and parallel to serial conversion, LED driving, and many other things. Now there's one more digital circuit in LDSPICE called a counter. Now unfortunately LDSPICE doesn't really offer too much information about it in the help file, but there's only one parameter you really need to care about with this counter. And basically, first of all you need to understand what it does. So this will take any sort of input clock pulse and then divide it and the number by which it divides can be set using this cycles parameter. So right now you can see that the output is dividing by 3. So after 3 clock cycles the output stays high for one cycle and then stays again low until another 3 clock cycles have passed. Now you can see that it has two outputs, so it has a phi1 and a phi2, difference being that the phi2 turns on at the beginning and then for 3 cycles it stays low and then again it will turn on. So it's a bit of an inverted operation. Now you can change the number of cycles to whatever you want and create a simple frequency division circuit. So right now it's set to 5, so you can see that it turns high and then 1, 2, 3, it, 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 it has a weird operating pattern. But it, it, it should work somehow. Anyway, you can do this sort of counters from D flip-flops or whatever other circuit. Well, hope you got some useful information after this. I will leave the simulation in the comments so you can check it out if you want to play around with it. Make sure to subscribe to be up to date with all my latest videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.